Unfilled. I'm Rihanna Dillon, and as ever, we are live from London. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by the cast and director of Peaky Blinders. They're here to talk all about the brand new series. But before we get them on, let's check out the trailer to series five. Please welcome Sam Claflin, Harry Curtin, Finn Cole, and Anthony Byrne. <laughs> Welcome, take a seat. Hello, Lovely everyone. have you all with us. Um, remember, if you're watching live, tweet your questions at Build Series LDN or leave a comment under the video if you're watching on Facebook. How are you guys doing? All good. Good? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. To be Happy here to be here. about uh, Peaky Blinders. Can you remember much about Peaky Blinders? It was like a year ago, right? Anthony, can you remember anything? <laughs> I remember it vividly because I'm watching it every day, all day. Every day, all day. Still. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you're probably best place to tell us then. Where did we leave Peaky Blinders at the end of series four? And then what can we expect from series five? Um, well, Tommy Shelby has just become uh, an MP. He's spending more time in London. And we jump to October 29th, 1929. And it's the... Uh, morning of the Wall Street crash, and it is the beginning of the depression and financial chaos, and it is the the prospect of the rise of fascism. Um, and we find Tommy Shelby uh, dealing with um, uh, a new antagonist who comes in the guise of uh, Oswald Mosley, is played by Sam Claflin, and he also is his own worst enemy. So there's very much two antagonists uh, this time around. And it's a, uh, a kind of dissection of uh, Tommy Shelby's uh, soul and his psyche. And we, we take him to the edge of oblivion over the arc of the season. So what was the most challenging thing about bringing series five to the screen? Um, there's an enormous amount of planning that goes into uh, putting a, a series like this together. Um, just logistically, uh, as the show becomes more successful, the the cast um, uh, become busier. Mm -hmm. It's harder to wrangle everybody and get everybody uh, to to Manchester um, or Liverpool or Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, and Especially then, when it's raining as much <laughs> as it did. <laughs> exactly. But people um, are reluctant to come out in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Understandable. There are uh, there are huge um, practical and logistical challenges. Um, the move from BBC Two to BBC One is just such an amazing compliment, right, from the BBC. So what, I mean, for you guys who read the script, what was it about Stephen Knight's writing that is just so compelling? What kind of, you know, where was the magic? I mean, every year, I've said this a million times, but, you know, they're such, those scripts are such page, tur page turners. We have so much fun reading them, I think, in, in the lead up. And then... You know they don't really they hardly change which is a testament to steve's writing that they that they stay the same and lots of lots of these scripts can evolve as, as production goes on mm -hmm. but they they don't really change because he's he's got it all in his head and when you confidently know that your writer can uh, is can produce such interesting storylines and stu such great lines and such great scenes um it kind of brings us back every year so as hard as it is for, <laughs> for you to wrangle us, we all want to be back. <laughs> we all want to be here because uh, we want to make the most of that. Yeah. Um, and Killian's uh, character, Tommy, had like a really interesting career change at the end of series four. So he's now a politician, which I think none of us would ever have expected, really. Um, have there been any other ex unexpected moments for your characters, and particularly you returning characters? Um, uh, <coughs> just just Finn, Finn's um, character development in general, I was just curious as to where it was going to go, and this year he definitely like last year taking someone's eyes, and I think this year he's that curiosity that he has has sort of gotten away with him, mm -hmm. and he and he's just more curious to sort of get his um, get his hands dirty, you know. Uh, now that his brothers are moving here, and everywhere, and different sort of career paths, and I think yeah, he's sort of always trying to prove himself, which is either going to be the lesson learned or the death of him eventually. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, his, his brothers are soldiers. But no, he, he'll obviously be in it seven, eight, nine, ten. He'll never, ever die off the series, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's just interesting to see where Finn's going to go because I, I was a bit curious about him myself anyway. But like you were saying, I, 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 to be honest, I don't read that much. Mm -hmm. And whenever I get the scripts, I read them straight away now. 
yeah. straight away. I just, I actually genuinely love reading them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're quite right about that. What was it like for you, Sam, sort of getting your first Peaky Blinders script? Um, in all honesty, I, I'd only ever seen one episode before I received the script. Okay. But I, I, I made which episode was it? Better have been a good one. It, it was. I think it was episode well, clearly one not, of series didn't watch one. Any more. No, but I, <laughs> like um, it's because I, you know I have this thing where I like to watch them all together, and I got behind a couple of weeks, You're and therefore. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to kind of catch up, but I wanted to do it properly. And then I got so far behind that, you know, <laughs> uh, I, li I lived my life in a shadow, basically, uh, and trying to avoid spoilers. But I think um, when I received the script, I made a promise to myself that I wanted to go back and watch series one to four yeah. before I got down to reading them. And I think when I once I started watching them, I, I watched all four series in four days and then read the, the fifth season the next day, you know, so it was very fresh and very um, raw and, and, and real for me in, 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 you know, in reading it. Um, you know, and honestly, I was just sort of blown away but by, I mean, Stephen's writing, but his character development, not only of my character's journey, but like these guys seeing where they kind of started and where they are now, you know, it's, it's, it is so un unexpected. So, you know, but the great thing about Peaky Blinders is you should expect the unexpected. And I think that that's what kind of keeps the audience coming back, but the cast and everyone, everyone, you know, um, I'm a fan and I think I speak on behalf of everyone involved, the crew included, when I say that none of us are doing this for the money, it's because we love, we love this um, story and we love this, this, this world that we've created together. So I feel very lucky to to have the old honour to kind of join 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 the ranks. So you're obviously playing Oswald Mosley, a real life MP. Were you able to do quite a lot? Yeah, yeah, there you are. <laughs> Still rocking the Oswald tash, yes. obviously. <laughs> I love them so much. <laughs> really really hope that's not true um, <laughs> no, it's, it's not true <laughs> does it sort of increase the pressure if you're portraying um a character sort of a real life character if, are you trying to do it really authentically or are you trying to bring your own slant well uh, we, we I, I reminded anthony of this um early earlier today um day one you know my first sort of spoken word and spoken scene uh i definitely had analyzed every movement of oswald mosley as much footage i could get my hands on I was like i'm gonna i'm gonna nail this impersonation i'm gonna i'm gonna be oswald mosley and i remember one of the first things anthony went what what's going on with the accent man like <laughs> you know, great it's great work but like just you know keep keep it just be yourself like and i'm a really bad irish accent clearly <laughs> It but no, he basically sort of one, said, I don't want an impersonation. I, I just want a flavor of him. And so I think I think that kind of took the pressure off and I allowed myself to kind of sit into it. And, um, you know, it's a character that really I, I had no judgment about because I didn't know who he was prior to these scripts. Um, I obviously then started doing the research and sort of making my own mind up. But the scripts really were, were what informed me of how to play it. And I, the rest sort of just came sort of instinctually. There were a couple of moments physically that I wanted to, to match. Um, and, and uh, you know, as I say, a flavor of him um, vocally and physically. But uh, I think we kind of had a bit of artistic license to kind of go our own way with it to an extent. So. Well, we're all going to get a little taste of Oswald Mosley right now. Okay, we I apologise in advance. Exclusive clip. Let's have a look. <laughs> it's intriguing. How do you feel about watching yourself back? Not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. I, I, I'm not a not a fan. I, I, I feel like I have to in order to kind of learn to better my bad mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I'm not. I'm not a fan. Can you guys? Can you watch yourselves? On screen. Never. No, this will really? be the most painful thing to really? watch. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I just always remember that, like, I think it was one of my first scenes. And I'm in the room because me and Isaiah have been naughty, well, Finn and Isaiah have been naughty. And he goes, like, oh, okay, what's going on then? And I just go, it was a fair fight. And I want to <laughs> hit myself in the face so bad. But that's what they wanted because you speak slower back then. <laughs> but I just, that was the first time I really just didn't. Didn't enjoy myself, but I, I think what it is is that we're like perfectionists. We want this show to be perfect, and yes. I think that now the pressure's building as well. Yeah, something that the show's done really well is kind of build this fantasy world where we can all look cool and look great. And yes. when you don't fulfil that, or you don't feel like you fulfilled that, I think that's what's hard to watch back. Yeah, I'd say that this year just Finn's trajectory, like built, like changing, and him building as a person. Like this year, I'd say just even working with you, Anthony, like reaching different levels within my artistic flow and stuff and like <clears throat> it was just different this year I really enjoyed it sort of put myself out there a, a, a bit more mm -hmm. um, 
But obviously, I've got a whole career to keep on doing that. But yeah, this season, I'd say I'm a bit more nervous than the others. Are there any <laughs> Looks like we're friends there, mate. <laughs> So I actually yeah, like I don't him. actually like him. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are also some other new additions um, to the show, which makes it feel really like fresh and exciting. So, Anthony, tell us um, a bit about some of the other characters and how they link in. Um, well, we have uh, the amazingly talented and beautiful uh, Anya Taylor Joy, who's playing uh, Gina. Yeah. Um, we were very lucky to have her come and join us, um, and. Um, she plays uh, Michael's wife, who kind of comes to Birmingham on a whim. Mm -hmm. um, and um, is a bit of a manipulator and a game player. And she has very good street smarts, but she's uh, slightly out of her depth. And um, What's it like having like an American on set? Does it make a difference? Are you kind of... As an oh, yeah. uh, ca American character, I well, think having it's, an American um, actress more, right? Uh, she's well, she's from all over the place. From all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very can't Mongol. quite pinpoint where pinpoint yeah. where she's from. She um, sounds like she's English. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I think having Anya on set was was huge for for me. I, as in, she's sort of my partner in 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 crime in this in this season, and um, we literally, had a lot of, literally, literally, I yeah. suppose, yeah. Um, and we had a lot of great scenes together and and so to have that experience someone who's whose career so far has kind of gone in every direction she's tried a bit of everything and has been has been successful um we were very grateful to work with that i think on set and and be able to trust in that and i think for steve as well going forward he he's gonna have the same feeling um of of being able to trust in in these characters and mm -hmm. trust in in our relationship on camera and i mean i hope it comes across well because we had a lot of fun doing it there's a lot more to come from her. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you Plenty. know that? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say probably not so much from me because she's better than me in all of the scenes. But uh -huh. that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, what's it like for you guys not having to just be filming in London the whole time? It must be really nice to be off in different locations in, I mean, Birmingham, right? You know, so all in town. <clears throat> yeah, it's not it's not quite where I lived and where I grew up. It's more in the black country. Um, it's only in the black country museum as far as I'm aware, which is lovely. Oh, look at that. I mean, it's so, that so it's so beautiful though. It is so. I really no. I like it. I like that we don't just film. I mean, again, this kicks off my career, so I'm yet to go here, there, and everywhere filming yeah. stuff. So I've only ever known really Manchester, Liverpool, and Black Country whilst filming this. I've done a couple of short films and stuff, but um, yeah, I've only ever really known this. It's more of a question for you guys. Like, is it I mean, nice to be in different parts of England? Yeah, the locations are, I think fantastic. Every year we seem to find more and more beautiful locations mm. that are of the era. Oh yeah, the big mansions and stuff. Sorry to interject. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's gorgeous, you know, so lucky. And and you know, in the downtime that we have on set, being able to walk around those grounds and things. Um that massive tent that we worked in. I mean that sounds not very <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> really I promise you. It was a mark. Well I mean this is a beautiful <laughs> location. This was the very first day of filming. I'm assuming um, you brought the phone box in, did you? We we brought the phone box <laughs> and the horse <laughs> with wow, us. Wow, it's so convenient. Um, I find it. That moor had just burnt down um a few weeks before and we went up there knowing that it would look uh, pretty extraordinary, but that so was the first it day. Down. Yeah, uh, the did you burn it down for the location? The location, location, scouting. location scouting. We had a back conversation. The green screen. And then looks I read really about it on the news. Um, but yeah, it's the very first image you see um, in the first episode, and it was the very first thing we shot as well. But um, yeah, the locations are amazing. They are stunning. Yeah. And something else that is so special and unique to Peaky Blinders is the music. I mean, Anna Calvi is responsible for this incredible punk rock soundtrack. So what effect does modern day music have on the, the action in the show? Well, historically, it's always been very important and they've kind of made it their own. Um, Anna Calvi is, is a singer that I have been a fan of for years. And uh, this season, because of um, the darkness of Tommy Shelby's soul and his psychology and his character, it was leaning more um, as a character piece. And I wanted there to be a score. Um, there's still commercial music, but I wanted to lean heavily on a score. And I wanted um, somebody like Anna to bring that to the show. And I was very lucky um, that she said yes. And that was, for me, one of the, the kind of great privileges of making it was getting to collaborate with her on the score. Um, and working with her and uh, 
sort of being there and listening to these sort of sketches that then became these finished pieces. And she's an extraordinary talent. Um, Did you play any of it while you were filming? Is it like no? It all happened after. Right. Okay. Myself and Killian would talk about songs that we wanted to use, and we were listening to music, and we were listening to different bands, mm -hmm. and we were passing stuff back and forth. And we have a really amazing music supervisor who was suggesting tracks as well. And then we built a kind of library of music that myself and my editor would um, kind of audition against uh, different scenes, but. Uh, uh, there's, I mean, Idols, we've got three tracks from Idols. It's a great uh, young band called the Pearl Hearts that I'm a big fan of. They, they open episode three, which is a really great uh, beginning. Um, there's a lot of, uh, actually, Black Sabbath. <laughs> uh, yeah, why hasn't that been used before? It's I an, mean, it just it felt was. like a no-brainer because, yeah. uh, well, I, I, I was kind of going, why have they not been used before? Yeah. But um, yeah, we use a couple of tracks, uh, The Wizard and um, War Pigs. Mm. I mean, just the, the impact, I think, on Peaky Blinders, just culturally, <laughs> it's amazing. So the costumes, for example, um, I mean, they've kind of influenced everything from bringing back the, the haircuts to the flat caps, which you are brilliantly sporting for us today. <laughs> Thanks. He was wearing it before Peaky Blinders started. Though. Right. Thank you. Just, well, just as little note. Originally, back in the yeah. early 1900s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a really incredibly talented costume designer called Alison McCosh, Love who her. did um, uh, season four and was BAFTA nominated. Uh -huh. And she came back to do season five and I think just took it in a completely uh, new direction. And she's just a phenomenal talent. What and then we have an amazing tailor who's from Dublin who um, makes uh, the suits for all the guys. Amazing. I mean, yeah. what are some of your top tips for, you know, the, the classic look at that, kind of man. look? What a yeah. I think all, to look uh, as, Alison. as cool as possible. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, uh, when I first saw Alison this season, it was a very different conversation to this e the conversation we had last season. It was like, you know, it was talking about the colors and the tiny little design ideas in the costume that are going to show that, you know, Michael is part of this younger generation, this kind of forward thinking movement, which is an arc that the character has been on for the last couple of seasons and <coughs> continues to, to go on as the as this season goes on. And as you can see there, like, you know, just <laughs> Anya's dress is just extraordinary. She looks like a golden globe. It's yeah, incredible. And, she does. and I think that being able to enjoy that and embrace that as an actor when you step on set and mm. you really feel the, the power in those costumes and what they represented and what they represent in this particular show gives us a, a confidence um, and it gives us lots of other things as well but it yeah. gives us a confidence to really go out there and kind of and have as much fun as Steve has when he's writing it and as as Ant has when he's editing it and directing it and it's um, it's that process that I think has made our show you know not only really fun to be a part of but fun to look back on and fun for the audience I hope to, to watch. We've got a really nice question um, from Morgan Olsen on Facebook who has asked how do you think your characters would fare in the modern world? I think Mosley would be just fine. <laughs> Strangely, <laughs> right now, unfortunately, yeah. he'd be in his element. Uh, but I, I think that's the beauty of this this particular series and the, the the introduction of him at this time. Like I think it is so unfortunately very relevant to to our, our political sort of stratosphere at the moment. And um, you know, words and phrases and quotes that I use in this series are, are quotes and words that you hear. Not a daily, but like, but mm -hmm. almost daily basis at the moment, and it's it's quite terrifying. So I genuinely think he has an audience, um, which is you know scary, scary thought. Mm. Um, so I think I think, uh, yeah, he'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> what about you two? Um, again, I think he would be fine for not the same reasons, but similar kind of reasons. I think that he's he's smart and he's business orientated and he's forward thinking, as I say. So. I think he'd be okay, but I, I don't necessarily think that he'd be a nice person to, to be associated with by any means. But no. I don't know if we could say that about any of the characters <laughs> in this show so far. Yeah, I would say that, that Finn would just, he would be led by what empire or what thing that his brothers would cr have created, like he mm. kind of has now. I think his world was very much shaped without his, his knowing, you know what I mean, without mm -hmm. his father being there. And his three very brutal, not very good father roles of a brother's. And his family in general, so I think that he would just get swept along with whatever they decided to do, which could have been a similar thing. Just, you know, we still have gangs and violence and a lot of knife crime and stuff today. So I feel like Finn might eventually get stuck in with that as he kind of is now, to mm -hmm. be honest. 
Um, Finn, what was it like for you sort of after your brother Joe like left and sort of not being with him on set anymore? Uh, it was, it, I mean, it was really sad. We had, a, I think Steve kind of, uh, to his credit, really gave a, a great ending for Joe and, and allowed me to be a part of that as well, which uh -huh. was really nice because obviously Joe kind of helped introduce this this world to me. And um, But as I say, he had a, he did a fantastic job over those the seasons that he was in and really kind of helped build that, the infrastructure in that family yeah. that we now know. Um, and some, when something like that happens in a story, it's a, it, it kind of completely changes our perspective of this family. So, um, yeah, it's been it's it's been a wild ride the whole way through, and that was just another kind of twist and turn that that we uh, that we've got. But no, it's uh, he's great, and he's I think very excited to see the next series as well, and and be able to watch it as an audience member. Have you told not, him so. anything that happened? No, of course not. Good. Of course not. <laughs> Um, so Peaky Blinders has spanned a decade so far and this series tackles fascism, the Wall Street crash. Is there anything else that you would like to see the Shelby family and everybody else sort of have to deal with in the in the next couple of series which have officially been confirmed? Yeah, a lot more of Mosley. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's what I want. <laughs> Except with me and I get, I get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've enough to contend with. <laughs> So I think I don't know. I think I would love to ask Steve that question. I wish Steve were here to answer that because it, that man's imagination just doesn't stop going. So I think that I, I think that with this kind of show, the fantasy element of it almost allow will allow us to explore so many different, you know, all of that history up until now mm. that we can explore um, with with a bit of kind of fantasy thrown in. I think the possibilities are endless. Yes. Um, it's a good note to end on because that is all we've got time for. But you can catch episode one of the brand new series this Sunday on BBC One at nine o'clock, swiftly followed by episode two on Monday. It's exciting. So we're going to be joined by Sam and Ara Taylor Johnson and the not, all not this Sam. No, no, <laughs> sorry, no. Uh, Sam uh, Taylor Johnson, the director, and also and the all female trio M O. But for now, please give it up for the cast and director of Peaky Blinders. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.